This game is ridiculously stupid and broken, and yet I can't stop playing it. That's not just a title, that's not just trying to drag you in with some sort of catchy premise. I believe every single word of what I just said. This game is ridiculously stupid, it is broken, I don't understand how it functions, and yet I keep playing it. This is QE from, from Board Game Tables. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is a very different format than my usual review because of how crazy everything is here. So let me tell you a bit about how the game plays, explain why it's broken and why it doesn't work, and yet every single time I play this, there's still strategy, there's still a winner, there's still people literally cracking up because they cannot stop laughing, and I don't understand how it works. So. QE, which stands for quantitative easing, which is a government term about basically flooding the, uh, the, the markets with money to, to help stimulate their economy, thus devaluing the dollar, which is relevant in this game. So QE. The goal of the game is to gather companies. Every single turn, you're going to go ahead and flip over a company, and then players are going to bid on that company. They're going to go ahead and write down on their board a little amount that they are bidding in order to gain the company. The reason you want companies is because of this scoreboard over here. This scoreboard over here is going to give you reasons you want companies. The basic idea is you're going to go through all of these, going through each metric at the end of the game to score points. The first metric is every single company has a point value in it. That's the top part, company VP. From there we have zero bids, which is there's four rounds to the game, or well, it depends on the player count, there's a different number of rounds, but in each round you have an opportunity to bid zero one time for two points. You'll want to get those eight points. I mean, this game is going to have end game winning scores between 30 and 50 generally, and so eight points can be a big deal. And there's many times and opportunities to do it, so factor that in. Then from there, nationalizations. You want companies that match your specific location. So for instance, JP over here, we want that company over there. US will obviously want US companies. The more you get, the more points you'll score. Then you want to have monopolies. You want to have monopolies in all the different regions, uh, the, the different uh, economies. There's four, depending on the player count, or five, depending on the player count. But in each of those, you want to get as many as you can. The more you have, if you have one, no points. If you have two, three, or four, you'll get three, six, or ten points. Again, that changes depending on the, the, uh, the side you're playing with. From there, you want very, uh, diversification. Diversification is for each set of three or four different companies, you'll score four or eight points. You'll add all that up, and whoever has spent the least money is going to get a bonus six points, and whoever has spent the most money is disqualified from the game, and that is the game. Once again, quick recap, bid on companies for a variety of things that you're trying to get them for for different ways of scoring points. If you, score, if you spend the least money, you get six bonus points. If you spend the most money, you are out of, out of the game. You cannot win, plain and simple. That's the game. Here's the catch. Here's the thing I haven't told you and the thing that breaks this game. You can write whatever amount of money you want on this bill. Any amount, from a dollar to 70 trillion dollars or gajillion or whatever it is, you can write whatever you want on this bill. I think this game is a game that you have to play before you can get involved in economy, in government, before you bid on Bitcoin, before you buy Bitcoin, anything like that, you need to play this game because of the brokenness that this game is. So the game sequence is you have an auctioneer every round, the auctioneer looks at the tile, writes down their bid, you know, $10,000, $500, $1, whatever it is, and they put their bid face up on the table. The other players all write down their amount on their bid, they pass it to the auctioneer, the auctioneer then says, hey, John, you won this tile. They go ahead and write the bid on the back of the tile. That is how much John spent. John takes the tile. He's earned the tile. And everyone else does not know what John bid. The auctioneer knows what John bid. John knows what John bid. The other players just know that their bid didn't win. Which means if Harry over there bid $10,000, he knows that John bid more than $10,000. With me so far? Great. We cycle around and people start escalating. This is the part of the game that I have not been able to get it to stop. Because I'm sure there's a few ways you can play this game. I'm sure you can play this game with a balanced economy where everyone spends between $500 and uh, $10,000 on any given bid and it's all nicely balanced as a cap. I'm sure it can be done. You know, my, my screen's going on behind me. I'm sure it can be done as far as just bidding a reasonable amount of money. But when I say I'm sure it can't be done, it cannot be done with my game group. That part is for certain. My game group is crazy. They refuse to keep this economy stable because what happens is the first round, you're bidding five to a hundred dollars on your on your bid. Then it escalates around as people start seeing, because eventually what happens is somebody, somebody around the table gets sick of not winning and they say, forget this, I'm bidding ten thousand dollars. Meanwhile, everyone else is bidding two hundred, two fifty, and someone bids ten thousand dollars and they obviously win. But now the auctioneer knows that ten thousand dollars is in play. Which means the auctioneer system says, well, if they bid $10,000, I have a choice. I can let them just sit there holding the bag so that they lose the game, or I can start upping my bid. 
and depending on when that happens in the game, most of the time, the players start upping their bid. Because once a player is guaranteed out, once they are for sure, uh, once they for sure have spent the most amount of money, they're not incentivized to play by the rules anymore, and they'll tank the whole game for you. So you sit there, for the sake of keeping the game going, you keep escalating the economy. The next thing you know, someone's bidding $500,000. The next thing you know, someone's smirking and laughing as the auctioneer because someone else just bid $1.2 million. A turn after that, someone's bidding $400 million, then $500 million, then $1.4 billion. We have had a bid of $10 trillion in this game. $10 trillion. Which makes everything that happened in the game look like peanuts up until that point. This is a game in which the goal is to continuously escalate the economy. That's not the goal, this is what happens. The goal is to continuously escalate the economy until eventually somebody is left holding the bag. Eventually, you get down to the last two or three tiles and someone bids $700 million billion and they shouldn't have gone that high. And then they find out that they're out of the game. They've overspent, unfortunately. The auctioneer sits down, other people don't match it because other people are at this point worried because you can only keep that economy growing for so long before somebody is going to be left holding the bag. Somebody is going to be left bidding the most amount of money at the table. Again, I'm sure there are groups that play this game well-balanced and sit there with a stable economy or whatnot. You can even agree to house rules. You can sit there and say, hey, I'd like to keep this economy between this and this, and people can agree or not. They can also turn around and outbid as soon as they realize that it's not working out for them. And they will. There's no incentive not to. At any given point, you keep escalating the economy and people keep being left holding the bag, which has this weird effect. When I say this game is broken, that's not the part that's broken. The part of this game is broken is the fact that knowing, I walk into every single game of QE, I walk into every single game knowing that the first bids of the game are meaningless. The first bids are completely garbage because while I'm sitting there trying to hold back and show restraint and only bid 500 instead of $1 million on that first round, the only reason I'm not locking in and guaranteeing myself the win is because I exist under the false pretense that the economy matters, even though I know that the economy will escalate in this game every single round. And my penny-pinching bid where I saved $1,000 by only bidding, you know, 12000 instead of 13000 that's going to be peanuts at the end of the game. We're going to be looking around the table and saying, well, you spent $500 billion, you spent $700 billion. turns out you spent the most. And I'm congratulating myself and patting myself on the back because I saved $1,000 and lost a valuable point-scoring tile. This game is broken. It should not work. And yet every single time I sit down to play, it somehow does. It's almost as if all the players at the table, myself included, live together under this fake illusion that the economy matters, that things won't escalate. We kind of agree to this false promise that we all know is a lie, but it works. And yet it shouldn't. It really genuinely shouldn't. But what ends up happening is we end up having a strategic game where we know it's a lie. We know the cake is a lie. We know the entire premise is a lie. Yet we keep playing by these fake rules, just hoping that we won't be left holding the bag by the end of it. Along the way, we're laughing like crazy. You could not believe the amount of laughter, the amount of hilarity, the amount of people just going crazy at the table. People will be bidding, you know, with $10 million, and someone else will be like, well, here's my $0 bid so I can lock in my two points. Other people will be writing so little silly messages on their checks to the auctioneer being like, uh, I'll have whatever Harry's selling. I, I, you'll just write bizarre things because you're just crazy. You're punch drunk crazy on the madness that is this game. It should not work. I am not saying that as some sort of cute little pun. I do not understand. Genuinely, I could not. I could not explain to you why this game works. I could not explain to you why the strategy is still there. I could not explain to you why I still believe this is a game that functions, even as I 100% genuinely believe it is broken. Now, again, none of this is relevant or true for people who manage to keep a stable economy. I, I'm curious, if you are someone who plays QE, if you are someone who plays this game, please let me know in the comments down below if this is a game that you actually hold a stable economy, because that has not been my experience with the game. My experience with the game has only and exclusively been the madness of players escalating the bid, because again, when three people at the table, in a four-player game, when three people at the table are sitting there holding a stable economy, if that fourth player exceeds that stable economy early on, if you're all bidding 10000 and they bid $1 million and you're only on your third tile of the game, there's no incentive for the other players to not continue that escalation to not match them and once you've been outbid by someone who went crazy you're gonna pull the same garbage in return it works it's crazy it should not work the entire premise is a lie and yet we have fun and yet we play strategically we try to go for the tiles that matter the most while letting things slip by that don't 
we try to operate under this false premise. Again, I think this is essential for people who work in government, for any e e economist, for anyone who's investing in any sort of, well, you know, something like Bitcoin, where you're worried about, where you're basically trying to buy in on the future value. This entire game is buying in on the future value of keeping the market going, keeping the market escalating, hoping that you are not the person left holding the bag, that your 500 million bid, your new bid $500 million on a tile, is it? going to be, are you going to be the person who now set the floor for $500 million? Wow, you spent $500 million. Or somebody else sitting there spending $500 trillion and your $500 million is a blip on the radar that nobody cares about. QE is broken. And yet I have fun. We play strategically. We enjoy it. And I keep wondering whether the next game will be our last. Again, genuinely, I keep wondering whether the next game of QE we will be play stops being fun, whether that premise suddenly goes out the window, whether the opening bid is $17 trillion because it's just the game we're playing. I keep wondering when that will happen. It hasn't happened yet. It may well happen. And the day it does, the game's gone. The day, this, this, the day we stop operating under this false premise, the day we stop buying into our own lies, is the day this leaves my collection. Until then, we'll keep having fun, we'll keep being stupid, we'll keep being crazy, or maybe, maybe we'll learn to actually uh, keep an economy stable. I doubt it, but we can certainly try. Overall, I really enjoy QE. For right now, this is going to be one of the weirdest. This is not a standard review for me. The format's gone because I don't know how to judge this game. I genuinely believe it's broken. But if I were rating this game right now, I skipped the whole what I like, don't like, and see what it's not liking. I just jumped all, uh, all away from all of that. Uh, in terms of player count, this is a 3-5 to five player game. I played it at 4 and 5 so far. I've not played it at 3. In terms of player count, I mean, again, I, I, I imagine 3 would work. I don't see why it wouldn't, but I think 4 or 5 is probably the sweet spot for it. In terms of ease of play, really easy game to teach and all of that. In terms of final thoughts, this game is ridiculous. It is broken, and yet it's fun. If I were rating this right now, it would be a 4 out of 5, with the potential for it to drop down to a 2 or anything lower. It could drop down to anything if this stops holding up the fake promise. I feel like this game is lying to me, and yet it's fun, but as long as it continues to be fun, I'll take that lie. So four to five, with the potential to drop off to a two as we continue playing it. I just I just don't know. It's that kind of crazy. As far as other game recommendations, if you like the premise of QE, but you want something a whole lot more stable, uh, High Society will have a similar mechanic in terms of bidding for things, and then the person who spent the most loses, but it does so in a stable economy without the premise of constant and incredible escalation, or if you just want a general stock game that's going to be a lot more balanced and totally different, then Stockpile is another great choice you can take a look at. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know what to make of this game or this review, so um, you're on your own for this one. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.